Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Na Yang today. She's uh, been interning with us here in Microsoft Research Connections this summer. Uh, she's from University of uh, Rochester, upstate New York. Uh, her research interests are in signal processing, uh, mobile communication, sensor networks. And uh, this summer, she's actually developed a unique uh, sensor for the mobile Windows 7 uh, mobile phone. Uh, over to Yang. Yeah. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Na Yang. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, have it, all of you here today to come to my presentation. It's my great pleasure. And um, the phone application I developed during the summer is called Listen and Feel. Um, so it's a mobile emotion sensor which can detect people's emotion based on how you speak to the phone. It will use signal processing and cloud computing. And my uh, mentor at MSR is Artman Samuel. Okay. Um, here is the, uh, the last chance I do my introduction here. Uh, I come from University of Rochester, which is a very cold place. You can see from the uh, left, left, uh, up left picture, there are a lot of snow during the winter. And my um, uh, advisor at school is uh, Wendy Hanselman. Um, from this picture, you can see that's a beautiful view from the top of my campus. And in my spare time, I like playing pipa. So if there are any questions or any concerns, you can contact me through my um, uh, email address. So any, pro uh, any questions are welcome during my presentation. OK, here's the outline. I will, um, I will um, uh, explain how we come up with this idea to develop, develop this emotion sensor and how we implement it on the cloud. And uh, we'll, uh, I will sum up with the challenges and the future work. And of course, the, I also brought the phone here so you can see the demo and uh, you can try that. OK, so uh, nowadays, uh, phones are used everywhere and uh, anytime. Uh, and there are a lot of sensors which enable the phone to be a very convenient uh, tool and also a daily component to us. We can see there are um, microphone, cameras, and on the right side, that's an uh, uh, accelerometer. So if you move your phone, it will detect the movement. And also the GPS, which will tell you your location. And also the geometer. So if you just move your phone or turn it around, so it also can feel that um, difference in position. Also, um, uh, besides those sensors, there are another kind of sensor which can help monitor our physical condition, like the new uh, prototype. Uh, developed by RIM, which called uh, BlackBerry Empathy, which can detect all the, um, the user's heart rate, blood pressure, and all, all this um, physical condition using a very magic a little ring here. But we'll come up with the question, what about the user's emotion? Um, physical condition is important, but sometimes emotion will be um, uh, more important, which, is our, which can tell us inside world. So let's begin from the very beginning. What is emotion? So from um, a definition, emotion is the psychophysiological experience of an individual state of mind as interacting with biomedical, which is the internal factors, and also environmental, which is the external factors. Um, so the reason why we want to deploy the sensor on the phone is that we want to detect emotion in a mobile fashion, where, where, uh, anywhere and anytime. And also, um, people may feel that it may be um, they are not very willing to tell their real emotion to the outside world or to another person. So, but they may feel comfortable talking to their own phone. So we would like to um, make use of this point to just to let the user to talk to their own phone, and then the phone will know the real emotion. It will be much easier. Um, for some, there are at least some user cases here. So uh, you, can, um, you can see that phone can be, uh, the emotion sensor on the phone 
uh, for example, it can be used in citizen science project. So some of you here may not um, have heard that, but that's a very um, popular citizen science project uh, happening now, which the very normal citizens can take part, uh, participate in citizen project to help the scientists or help the so social uh, psychologists, um, some other um, scientists in other research field to do some very simple uh, science project by collecting data. So that's a crowd enabled project. So um, by using our emotion sensor on the phone, we can help um, scientists in psychology or sociology to, for example, um, collect data and uh, test which city has the most highest uh, happiness index or which factors will influence people's emotion. For example, people may feel much happier uh, at home versus at work. So uh, that's a very interesting point to study. Also in healthcare, um, uh, because it's hard to know people's emotions, so a uh, patient with illness, uh, mental illness, may not be willing to tell their counselor or doctor about their real mood. So the doctors can put this motion sensor on the phone to um, do this monitoring all the time. Also, so social networks. Um, imagine that you can like a photo or a message or the status of your friends by using your voice. So if you um, uh, speak to the phone like, wow, that's amazing. And then it will transmit this message automatically to Facebook or Twitter to post to all your friends. So that will be a very cool thing. Um, also, we can, because social networks give us the opportunity to get a lot of data from a large population, so we can also make use of this to analyze emotion of the certain population. And also games. Um, I know some of the, of the intern here already got your Kinect or, and Xbox. So imagine if you can play an Xbox game, which you can influence your emotion on the character you are playing. So that would be extremely cool. So by using your voice, so the Kinect or the uh, Xbox machine will listen to your mood by listening to your voice. Um, so it can be on the phone or on the Kinect or other sensors. And finally, um, you can customize your phone. Um, imagine your phone will be will uh, change the sounds or the same color based on the mood, um, based on your current mood, so which will mo make the phone more lovely. Um, here's some survey. Um, in the Android or iPhone market, there are already some emotion detection application out there, um, but um, they don't used in. They are not used in the scenarios I've talked before, or um, neither do they have very strong scientific background. Um, so that's the a main difference. Um, and also Kinect, there's no emotion sensor on Kinect, but there are some very simple um, emo uh, speech recognition, which you can give very simple comments. So um, that the difference show how we stand out. OK, here comes the, the meat. <laughs> um, so uh, the phone application is look like this, and I will show the app later. So when you press the button, your voice, the whole audio wave file will be transmitted, upload to a server on the cloud. And um, we'll do some signal processing to extract the speech features of that uh, voice. So it does not try to understand what you are saying, but how you say that word or utterance or sentence. Um, and those features will be used as a test data to input to a learning machine. So we can see there, uh, on the other side, the server also works offline, which tries to extract all the speech features from a large database with over 1,000 uh, data samples. With no, uh, so there are speeches with no emotion. We also do the same thing, extract the speech features from all these data samples, and then use the same uh, machine learning algorithm, which is called logistic regression, to um, to train the system and get the weight. So uh, with the test data and the weight at the, uh, at the input, we can output the predicted emotion. And I, um, I'll talk about later how, uh, what the database we use, how we do the signal processing, and also how we do the uh, machine learning. OK, here's the database. Um, I, I will show you some samples. So 
um, the, the speakers are actors or actresses. They just uh, tell, um, speak a neutral meaning sentence uh, utterances like the number or the date. For example, pride. June twentieth. June twentieth. October fifth. October fifth. Five hundred eight. Five hundred eight. Another one, elation. Eight hundred ten. Eight hundred ten. You can hear eight hundred ten. Five hundred two. Five hundred two. Five hundred two. So emotions on the left side are both happy, happy emotions, and the emotions on the right side are used as sad emotions. For example, despair. November ninth. November ninth. Now hear the difference. Four thousand six. Four thousand six. They're performed by actors. Seventy one. Or Sunnis. August second. June twenty eighth. June twenty eighth. Just to give you some sense about the um, training data we use. So um, we have all the features listed here, um, in total 12 features, in the frequency domain and also in the energy domain. So um, all these features we get because, um, for example, pitch. Um, the pitch changes a lot if, if, uh, when we uh, speak. So that's a bunch of uh, pitch values. So we get the whole vector, and then um, calculate the mean value, max, minimum, standard deviation, median, and the range, all these statistic values. Uh, so all these 27, uh, 72 metrics are used as our, um, the, the risk factor or the features. Um, OK, here comes some signal processing things. Um, so given waveform, we will um, because they are digital um, sampled. So uh, for each sample, if the amplitude is above a certain threshold, we'll mark it as one. So here are the sample marker listed here. And then um, for a bunch of markers, we'll um, set a frame with a length 100 millisecond. So we do the signal processing, for example, pitch detection, energy calculation within that frame. And then we have this frame marker. So um, but you can see there's a little gap here because the amplitude is very, uh, very low, so it may not be very accurate to know the uh, exact pitch, uh, pitch value. So it um, doesn't make sense to calculate the pitch. So that will just uh, totally ruin our uh, result. So we'll just uh, do the signal processing in these um, frames with frame marker equals to one. And here, this slide shows the uh, the noise reduction. So before the noise reduction, we can see the pitch. There's some background, uh, background noise. But after that, we'll see the um, signal waveforms uh, pretty smooth. OK, here comes the first feature, pitch. Um, so pitch is a kind of a relative highness or lowness of the tone as perceived by the ear. So for example, women speakers tend to have a higher pitch than men. Um, we, the pitch uh, calculation uh, algorithm we use is in the time domain, which is called autocorrelation. Um, for example, for this um, utterances, we can see um, period variance um, a lot. Um, um, so each uh, sample here is the frame marker, which the amplitude of the frame marker detect, uh, shows the uh, pitch value, whether it's high or low. Um, the second feature is energy. So for within each frame, we get the summation of all the square value of the sample amplitude of the sample, sample marker, to, uh, which will be used at the uh, energy value of that frame. So we can see, you can also see from the amplitude of the waveform. So uh, energy is all above zero, because that's the absolute value. OK. Uh, last one is the format. So format is the um, it's generated by the vocal tract renaissance. So uh, I'll show later how the human speech is generated. So format is generally the gain in your in the speech uh, in the frequency domain, um, not the uh, the pulses, but the, they are shaped with uh, ups and downs. So only by this format. So with this gain, we can get the all those peaks 
which are determined, uh, which are um, defined as the uh, format frequency, and also we use the 3dB bandwidth. So uh, the algorithm we use to get the get the format is called linear predictive coding. Um, so um, from from the samples we can hear, they are shaped up and down with the format, kind of again. Um, and then we can have ups and downs in those sample markers. So the pictures above is the, um, the, uh, the final uh, speech signal we'll see in the frequency domain. So the other way around, um, what we see is the uh, signal like this uh, in the frequency domain. But we need to get again from, um, from the signal, um, which is not measured, but um, it is, it is not measured, but derived from the um, amplitude in the frequency domain. OK, so here are all the features I talk about. Um, so this slide shows the machine learning algorithm called logistic regression. So I know some of you are in the machine learning um, area. Um, so this is a very simple um, uh, machine learning algorithm because it's a linear. Um, that's a bunch of. Um, risk factors, which are the features we use, they are weighted by beta, which is called the regression coefficient. So they all form the input value z. And z is uh, the output can be calculated by using the function, the regression function shown above. So this function will output a value between either 0 or 1, um, between 0 and 1, which gives us the probability of occurrence of an event. Um, so you can see if the weight is pretty high or very low, it will show how um, strong or weak it will influence the um, final outcome. For example, from the simulations we did, we can see that energy and peak range influence a lot on the outcome. And um, the precision of our um, algorithm uh, is been tested through a, a method called cross-validation. And the outcome is around 71%. So 71 is calculated by all the, um, the values that calculate crack, uh, predicted correctly um, uh, divided by the total sample. OK, here comes the demo time. Um, so here is the button bar with the record button, play, stop, and the fill button, which is a little hard. Um, oh. Could you please switch to the projector? Thank you. So here's the phone. I'll make sure it's OK. So we can see here the, with a little heart, that the listen and feel application. Um, so in the start screen, we can see the, the, you can record, record your voice. Um, for example, let me give you an example first. Um, keep quiet. <laughs> I'm really happy today. Then I just press stop. Then we can press the fill button, which the audio wave file will be uploaded to the server. And it's processing now. <laughs> You can see you have a good mood. Um, OK, let me try again. Oh, no. Which is sad. Hopefully, you can give us a correct answer. Oh, uh, OK. Maybe it's too happy today for my presentation. <laughs> so any of you want to try that F? And if you want to try this um, demo, you can try it yourself. Would you like to say something? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, should I do it up there so that people can um, see? Um. Okay. It? All right. Cool. I'll warn you, I'm, uh, my voice is a little scratchy today, so I'm feeling a little under the weather today. I might have been too happy. Ah, uh, yeah. Press the feel button. OK, 
Hey, I'm not very happy today. All right, let me try to be cool. happy. <laughs> today is a great day. What a noise. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that didn't work out well. Let me try one more time. I'm having an excellent day today. We'll see. <laughs> it might just be the sickness. <laughs> Maybe the pitch of the mouth. Hey. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. We have proof. Yeah, so anyone want to try that again? Oh, okay, yeah. Or you can uh, play with it after the presentation. Hi, can, can we switch back to the laptop? Okay, cool. <laughs> so, here how this app is working. Um, we just demoed it. Um, so, to summarize the challenges, I think the, um, the most challenging part I face is how to set up the server on the cloud. So we'll use um, Windows Communication Foundation to do the communication between the phone and the, um, and the server. And also how to set all this configuration uh, correctly. For example, the firewall proxy and the internet information service, which host the service. And also there are a lot of uh, access control issues when you deal with the server you need to get the permission to access the file or um, change the file. And also, um, to put all the components together is, a, although it's, it's another um, challenging part because um, as I show in the architecture, there are a lot of, uh, for example, signal processing and how to design a phone application and also how to set up the server, how to, you need to learn and implement machine learning algorithms. So all this stuff, make the whole, whole uh, system work. So that, I think that's the beauty of engineer, being an engineer. <laughs> okay, some future work. Um, in the future, we need to uh, collect more data like this um, to test on uh, users. And then we need to compare the performance with other platforms, for example, uh, Apple, uh, iPhone, or Android. Also, uh, in the future, we'll publish as a conference paper. For, uh, also, we need to improve the precision uh, in different ways. For example, to improve the feature extraction algorithm based on the existing features. Or we can, uh, during my internship, I also talked with some, uh, some sorry, researchers in the uh, communication field. So they also give some very good recommendations, for example, to use the um, mouth frequency capture coefficient. Um, so we can try that um, feature as well. Also, we can try other machine learning algorithms. And also, um, one thing that we can use the user data, we collect it as a new training data to input to the training system. So we expect that we can get a better uh, result when we have more training data. Uh, third one is to refine the app. For example, only one user can access the app now. But if we publish on the market, um, we sh we should expect that more users can access the application simultaneously. So the server needs to kill all these requests and handle that. Um, and also we need to, um, another, another thing that we can see the application, is, um, uh, it takes some time to get the feedback from the server. That's because, uh, that's because we need to upload the whole audio wave file to the server. But if we can do some signal processing just locally on the phone and just upload the feature data to the server, so that will uh, reduce the traffic and we can get a better um, feedback speed. Um, and also we can add one uh, user privacy agreement uh, just when, before we play the app so user will know that their voice will be transmitted to the cloud. Um, also. Uh, I think if I, I'm lucky enough to, not, to do another internship here uh, next summer, probably I can uh, make this app really benefit the society. For example, we can use it in a citizen science product or healthcare product. I think that would be more meaningful. <laughs> and finally, um, because the app is trying to detect people's emotion, um, but imagine that we can do the other way around. Um, 
if, the, if there's a very um, plain sentence, but we want to color it with different emotions. So that will be more interesting. For example, um, if you call a call center, so that there's a virtual person <laughs> answering your phone, so you may feel that's a little bit uh, strange. But if we can color this conversation, for example, with different emotion, so you you are you, you will imagine that as if you, as if you are talking with a real person, so that will give us a better uh, user experience. Okay, finally, <laughs> um, the internship wrap up. Um, so. Uh, being an MSR is really a great opportunity because you can really do something, not just to sit in front of your computer, but you can play with other things like the server, the app, and so finally you can just make everything work, which is really wonderful. Um, so actually the first uh, recording I did on my phone is, well, the app is working. <laughs> it's real emotion, really happy. So it's not just the app, but everything works. So, which really a uh, fantastic job. And um, because my internship is in the connections group, and I want to sincerely thank you for all of your help um, during my internship for any advice or information you're, you, you have provided is really greatly, uh, would be uh, greatly appreciated. And <laughs> here the logo, uh, I don't know how to say that. Um, the, the spirit of the connection group is Imagine, event, inspire, and I really learned a lot from it. And also, say something about MSR. Uh, I think it's really a super research engine. I met a lot of, lot of res great researchers and the great intern friends. So uh, I really uh, want to come back to this cool place next summer, not because of the weather, but also the great research. Yeah, I think that's the reference. And thanks for watching. I'd like to take any question you may have. Yeah. I have two, uh, two comments. I think um, you, uh, you have to distinguish between uh, mood and emotion and expression. Okay. Vocal expression, facial expression. Yeah, These yeah. are things that you can object measure. So the publications you list there, some of them are very careful. They're saying we're detecting facial expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's something external. Mm -hmm. What you're doing, um, I believe, is vocal expression, yeah. not emotion, because um, emotion is internal. And then you yeah, have to verify if this guy is faking it or not, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you're mixing mood and emotion. Uh, emotion is kind of transient, short term, oh. and mood is long term, right? And uh, this is very complicated uh, uh, psychological difference here. Mm -hmm. um, a second thing is, I, I think, um, I believe right now your machine learning is kind of a speaker independent, right? You try to use the same training data and then try to uh, re detect the e emotion, vocal expression of everybody. Mm -hmm. And your accuracy is just a little bit bigger than random guessing. <laughs> okay. right? Random guessing is 50% and you achieve 70%, right? So I think that's, uh, that's actually pretty impressive because I mean, people can be so different <laughs> in their uh, vocal expression. So I wonder if you do personalized uh, yeah. uh, detection, probably be much more accurate. Yeah, we can refine the app to get uh, uh, actually record some voice from the user itself. Right. They'll find very you personalized can adaptation. item. You can adapt the, the, mm -hmm. the model you have in the cloud. Yeah, you can train with the user's voice. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, that actually, you can do it when you deploy in the marketplace. You can ask people to confirm, confirm whether the recognition is right or not, right? Mm -hmm. They can use that to basically tag the, the data you collect. Thank you. Good work. It's a lot of, lot of, lot of work. Thank you very much. Yes. Hey, I have a question. I think that's a great idea. And I'm interested particularly in your idea about call centers because we all like, you know, have called in and been on hold and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but what if you reversed it so the computer could actually know what kind of mood you're in? Okay. opposed to giving uh, emotions to the computer. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the computer can say answers like, oh, I understand you're frustrated at this point, sort of deflating tension yeah, um, in sort of like a computer way. Yeah, we can put a more angry customer to the top of the queue. So I can understand the emotions. <laughs> yeah, so next time you can pretend to be very angry. <laughs> Good point. Thank you. Yes. Uh, do you, uh, okay. I don't know if you got okay. something else. Uh, 
Do you, I know you, you showed a couple of potential applications of it, but um, do you have any other plans for making it sort of more like ubiquitous so it's just sort of part of the phone? And I guess I guess maybe that was part of the theme thing, but did you have any yeah, other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make it actually embedded in the phone, not a standout app. For example, it can constantly monitor or sample the conversation, the daily conversation, to track how your emotion is, is changing. So, yeah. Yeah, question on the back. Um, you kind of indicated at the beginning when you showed the samples that you took a variety of different kind of samples with different emotional labels yeah. and you categorized them as to like positive or negative. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just wondering if you'd thought about other, so there you've, you've done some kind of higher level lab labeling, but have you thought of other ways that you could kind of label the, the speeches without these kind of uh, labels that can kind of be like pride for instance mm -hmm. is um, maybe perhaps subjective and, and is loaded with other connotations um, but uh, there's other work in emotion which categorizes things in terms of valence and arousal which are yeah. um, perhaps a, a different way of looking at yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah. Another way to uh, another way to classify emotions is to um, use a quadrant. So emotions can be uh, differentiated in uh, negative emotions or active uh, or positive emotions. Like angry or sad is negative, and happy, and um, and interest or pride they are uh, positive emotions. Also, in another direction, it's the uh, active or passive, for example, bored or um, sad, uh, they are passive, but like happy or angry, they are uh, active emotions. So we do have that four quadrant, but it is just a very uh, prototype, so we just want to differentiate happy and sad. We should the effect of the circumflex, there are two dimensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pleasure, uh, one is activeness. Yeah, yeah, they put all the all the emotions there. So in the database, there are totally 14 emotions, including the neutral emotion. So I actually have a lot of comments. Uh, you define the problem as a classification problem, right? Yeah. You try to classify as high or sand. Actually, most of the time, we're emotionless, right, yeah. when you talk to people. I think the problem probably can be better defined as a detection problem, when you can detect uh, unhappiness or happiness. Um, this actually, I, I, I had this um, observation from one of the papers cited, the Yobi Content paper. They claim they have a 70% accuracy oh. in recognized emotions. But the thing is, they actually showed 75% of the time people are emotionless. Basically, that means if you just always guess this guy is emotionless, you will achieve 70% accuracy. Yeah. So that's why I think defined problem as a detection problem, maybe, is yeah. more reasonable. Yeah, for example, the uh, it's, it's there should be a confident index to say um, the person very angry, uh, very angry, or very happy, or very sad. So if or the person just, or just right. okay, and another challenging part is that emotion is sometimes maybe confused with neutral. Uh, right. So, so I mean, the thing then become the the uh, the evaluation matrix become different, right? Right now you're trying to use a matrix, classification matrix to, to, to evaluate. Different features. Then it become a, a positive, a false positive, false negative, right? If it's a detection problem. Yeah. I think it may be more uh, accurate if we want to, if we can combine all this method together. For example, also try to interpret the conversation. For example, there may be some keywords to indicate whether people is, um, is in an active uh, or passive emotion. And also, we can combine the facial expression or the gestures. Yeah. So maybe Kinect will be a, will be the future. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Well, let's give a round of applause. For yeah, thank you.